Good morning, everybody. I cannot believe I'm coming on camera uh, looking like this this morning, but if you can't tell, it is super humid here in Zone 7B this morning. It is Memorial Day weekend, and uh, we've literally just rolled out of bed. But um, we're coming down to my husband's um, wildlife food plot area where we planted some Dunstan chestnuts last year, uh, five of them that we got off clearance. They're doing great. I'll show you those here just in a second. And uh, we're also going to be planting a uh, couple of plum trees, a couple of figs, and I think three or four blackberry bushes, thornless blackberry, um, just to keep um, the wildlife down here and out of our flower beds. So here's what we're doing today. Just stop here for a second and show you all the uh, wild ferns that we have growing. I'll reach over my husband here and show you one up close. These are growing all along this hillside and I have dug up many of them and moved them to our woodlands garden with uh, pretty much 100% success. Okay, so this is my husband's food plot uh, for hunting. And last year, was it last year we planted these? We planted these Dunstan chestnut trees. And uh, last year, one of them had actual a uh, couple of chestnuts on it. Obviously, they didn't make. They were too immature. But um, these have grown at least i would say a good maybe two feet um my husband says maybe even three since last year when we put them in so we're tickled about that and hopefully uh we'll get some chestnuts uh before too many more years if not even maybe one might put some on this year uh looks like we need to spray them or put something on them it looks like some of the leaves are something nibbling on them. But um, we've left the cages around them uh, because apparently that if you don't, the deer will come in and just annihilate them. So um, yeah, and we're also gonna be putting out some figs and I think some blackberries down here, which it's almost gonna be like an orchard, but for the wildlife, not for us. But you know what? I might sneak down here and grab a few chestnuts when they ever make, if they ever make. So yeah, Dunstan cherry. I'm sorry, Dunstan chestnut. Why did I say cherry? Uh, but yeah, that one, gosh, that tree's really on up there. It's probably almost 10 foot tall at this point. So they're doing really well. Okay, so this is my husband's feed plot that we've got, that we've been working on the last couple of years. It's about... Um, probably about a quarter of an acre and he had a little hut here on wheels and it's kind of deteriorated and we had started building one back here and then my husband had a couple of back surgeries so that has uh, stopped but he's recovering now slowly but surely and we hope to finish that sometime this summer maybe or in the fall when it cools down a little bit but um, what we did uh, as I mentioned earlier uh, we were going to come down and look at the Dunstan, cherry, uh, Dunstan chestnut trees. So we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, five of those. And we're uh, going to plant some plums and some figs and some other things. Basically just to keep the wildlife down here rather than up in our yard uh, in the flower bed. 
All right, these are the figs that we're gonna be planting, and these are Olympian figs. They are supposed to be hardy for our area, so we will not have to worry about them surviving over the winter, hopefully. We're gonna plant two of them. They're probably about eight or nine foot apart here, and um, we hope that they'll be producing figs if something doesn't eat them down, probably either next year or the following year. And although these are in shade this morning, they do get full sun after lunch. And of course, with the uh, figs, they need well draining and lots of sun and lots of water to get established. So that's something we'll have to keep in mind that if it gets super dry this summer, we will have to bring water down uh, just until they get established really well. Okay, and these are the blackberries that we're gonna be doing today. We've got three of those, and these are the Freedom, Freedom PP26 or 28. What is that? I can't read because I can't see anything. Um, but these are the blackberries, and of course, um, Primark is what my husband said. So these, if they produce, will be some nice sized blackberries. And these are thornless, by the way. Whew, thank goodness. Um, again, not really expecting to get a lot of fruit down here because we feel like the wildlife will be eating most of it. We have a bunch of these in our, in our yard up near the house, but these are basically just gonna be for the wildlife. We've gotten some huge rains here in the last couple of days, so the ground is super saturated, but that's great. Um, we're not gonna have to water these, putting them straight in, uh, because the ground is so moist right now, so that'll be great for these uh, blackberries. And he's putting some plant tone down in the uh, holes of all of these, and um, I think it smells like chicken manure, so, um, it's, it's a good fertilizer. They have plant tone, rose tone, bio tone, all kinds of tones, but uh, we've got a bag of plant tone and that's what we're using. So it should give these uh, blackberries and the other things we've planted a great start. And um, these blackberries are pretty vigorous growers once they get their roots established. So it takes them a couple of weeks probably uh, to get um, situated in their spots. And then before you know it, they're sending out shoots. Like I said, probably will not get any uh, figs or uh, blackberries this year. I don't anticipate, um, but hopefully they'll get established and um, going pretty good. And then next year we'll start seeing some things uh, happening. We may have to, this fall, uh, especially around the figs, we may have to mulch those in either with some straw or some uh, heavy leaves. Uh, or some pine bark just to kind of give them a little extra protection. So we've just kind of got them on this hillside here where they'll get really good drainage because that's the key with figs is they can't, uh, they like a lot of water, but they want well draining soil and the same uh, aspect. So back to the chestnut tree again, I'm just so um, interested in these trees. Uh, I don't know why, but they just amaze me that we're possibly going to get chestnuts off of them. Um, of course, I'm a huge Christmas person, and you know the chestnuts on a roasted chestnuts on an open fire uh, is just sounds like heaven to me. Uh, we've actually had them before uh, when we traveled, and it was pretty interesting. But I just want to show you up close um, on the tree again on this one you can see here i don't know again if this is a leaf or something forming there i've kind of googled it and um the fuzzy thing i showed you earlier may actually be a pollen um i guess thing that's going to pollinate some of the chestnuts but i don't know this is all new to us so again something we're gonna have to figure out but definitely we've got some bug activity on the leaves and we did that we had that last year too but they did fine so we may have to get some spray figure out what's best for um, spraying these chestnut trees if you all have ha had any luck with planting them um, 
getting them to produce, um, figuring out what this is eating on the leaves. Make sure you comment below and let us know. Um, we'd love to hear from you and find out what year uh, you started seeing actual chestnuts on your trees and um, that kind of thing. I know you can order these trees online uh, directly from the company if you're interested. Um, you can Google that, but um, like I said, we bought these last year. Uh, we went into a local Walmart and they had them. We were kind of shocked that they were there and I believe they were 30 something dollars to begin with and they had them on clearance for, um, I think it was 15 that we paid for them. So. Uh, got five of them. Coming out on where the new growth is. You can see the new growth on it. See the two stems, the things right there. Oh, yeah, I missed those earlier. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we may have some this year. Okay, we may have four or five chestnuts this year. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. I was telling them that we might have right there. chestnuts on an open fire roasted chestnuts on an open fire. So wouldn't that be neat? So neat. So so what animals do you think will eat the chestnuts? The Is deer, it just the deer, deer? The deer just love them. When they find them and finally get them or whatever, they'll fall on the ground. You can't really, you need to have a protective glove if you pick them up, they got a lot of spines on them. But somehow the deer, they get them cracked open or they'll eventually bust open. And each one of them, they say on these right here, will have like three chestnuts in the whatever it's called the spiny furry yeah. looking thing okay so and uh one right there i think there's some more forming down there where's one right here right there. Right there. oh yeah okay yeah i think that's the one i looked at there's first okay now that we're looking we can see a bunch of them so that's exciting and um They should fall about August or September. And the Dunstan cherry is chestnut. Again, I don't know why I keep calling it cherry. Um, what happened to the American chestnut, Russell? Blight. Blight took over and eliminated all the American chestnut. Okay, so this is kind of something that has been created by man, the Dunstan chestnut. Mm -hmm. And... Um, like we were strictly saying, for, they strictly made them for the wildlife, food plots, hunters, and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. This is the one that uh, the storm got the other day and blew over. I come down here and staked it. That's still looking good. Yeah. I was telling them we were leaving the cages on because of the deer, but we've also got a neighbor who has cattle yeah. and they, um, uh, basically roam all the time here in the, we actually saw them in our yard a couple of weeks ago and we've seen evidence of them here. I won't describe what kind of evidence, but you can imagine <laughs> from a cow and um, they apparently come here quite often. Oh, um, Russell, here's another one of those fuzzy things on the other tree I was talking about. So maybe this is a pollen, something about pollen. Um, is what it appeared to be maybe on google yeah that's what this looks like kind of like a fuzzy worm caterpillar thing okay so supposedly that's where they're going to start producing and i know chestnuts they come in a they're in a ball and it's kind of a furry ball and then it cracks open and the chestnuts actually inside of it so um yeah this is the second one that has the fuzzy thing on top of it or furry thing whatever you want to call it so you can tell that Russell has cut off the tape here I'll zoom in if I can get it on camera because it was already starting to uh, make a little mark there on the tree so we definitely want to baby these and and hopefully get something out of them do you want to see where I'm talking about there's one over there. I see so right here there. at the top, the furry thing. Yeah, that's, that, that'll be a metal. That'll make a chestnut. Okay, interesting. And I wonder, I guess these are going to be new leaves. I don't know. Yeah, we're just excited. Oh, here's another furry thing yeah. over here. 
Okay. They should. They said this year they'd start putting on. Okay. So, yeah. I need to let this come up. We'll have to keep you all uh Don't knock it off. I'm not. I just don't want to be in there and the deer get a hold of it or something. All right, thanks guys for watching. Hope you got something out of our little food plot video today. Again, if you have any tips on the Dunstan chestnuts, be sure and leave those for us. And uh, if you know what's kind of eating on our leaves and what you put on them to prevent that, that would be a help as well. Thank you all and have a blessed day.